now uh, it's time to the next one that will okay, be thank the, you. the thank you very much okay. for the opportunity see you guys yeah see you now uh, the next one is the Higo. hey simon hi how are you doing man i'm fine you uh, you can share your screen right now okay so uh I think that now FBI will start to check us, but uh, it's not a problem. Uh, we are safe. Okay. But okay, uh, he's with you. Hey, let me see. Let me know if you can see also my camera. Uh, uh, just a moment. Uh, uh, yes, I can see your camera and I can see uh, your screen. You can go. Uh, I'm okay. seeing your PowerPoint. Okay. Not the presentation. Okay, can, yes. can you see it? Can you see full screen now? Yes, it's okay right now. So stage a few and okay. You can go. Okay. Thank you, Simon. So first of all, thank you, Lutzol Group, for uh, organizing this event. Today I will talk about scanning Oracle databases for malicious changes. So we are going to see some attack vectors that hackers can use to store root kits inside the database and how we can protect or detect them, okay? So before, well, my name is Rodrigo Jorge, also known as RJ, but before even introducing myself, I wanna play a game, sorry, I wanna play a game. Uh, and in this game that I want to play with you is, I have a table with two identity columns and a secret inside, okay? And I put in that table uh, two rows only. My name, my second name, uh, some secret, and the date that this entry was created, right? And then I have this procedure that is used to get the secret from this table. So this procedure is simply, you can call it giving the name and the second name, and then it will give you back the secret that is stored in the secret column, okay? But my question is, and this is a bit interactive session, right? So I want, I want people to put in the chat window if they know where is the SQL injection in this uh, get secret procedure, okay? So imagine I give this get secret procedure, uh, execute grant public, and I just want people to be able to retrieve the secret passing name one and name two as parameters. So where is this SQL injection? And here are the options. And then I will start a timer, a 30 second timer, and I will wait this to finish. And Simon, if you can, please let me know if somebody answer in the chat window. Okay, so time is running. We have 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Okay, and time is out. So do, did we have any answer? Okay, so now I will give you the answer. Uh, before I give the answer, so we have some entries here. We have uh, concatenation here with the first name, uh, but this first name is having a, a, a code literal uh, inside. So this is protecting from SQL injection. This second name is also being protected from SQL injection with DBMS assert in code literal. And the answer is letter C, date created bigger than sys date minus 30. And I will tell you how this is possible, right? Because when you use date plus strings concatenations, NLS date format is used to do this transformation. And you can use a SQL injection using your outer session set NLS date format. And here you can put your, your, your SQL injection. And as this is being concatenated to a string, this will be converted and then this SQL injection can happen. So 
we had two lines in the table. Then I put this uh, NLS state format. Then when I run this get secret, you note that this deleted all the entries of this secrets table, right? So be aware with NLS state format. Some people didn't know, don't know that this can be used also for SQL injection, right? You only have a limit of uh, 44 charts to put something here inside. However, it is still possible to put some SQL injection in 44 characters as I just showed you, right? Or you, the attacker can maybe call a procedure here and use this to call another procedure. Okay, now let's finally start. Uh, as I said, my name is Rodrigo George. Uh, I work for Entet since November 2006. Uh, 2016, Entech was acquired by Accenture Group, and there I, I, I mostly perform Oracle security and cloud activities, right? But we as DBAs, we need to know everything. So I do also some performance, uh, health checks. I also do some uh, high availability deployments, etc. And those are the companies I worked before. I live here in Rio de Janeiro. It's in the southeast coast here in Brazil. Okay. Uh, I have uh, those four OCMs, 11, 12, MAA, and Cloud. I am also ACE director since January this year. This is my website, my Twitter, and, and LinkedIn profile if you want to follow me, okay? Okay, so those are some NCTEC numbers. We, are, we have more than 13 A's. Uh, we have deployed more than 1,000 engineer systems. People from our team have published some books as well. Uh, and before we start in this detecting malicious changes in the database, uh, database security is always a pretty wide theme, right? So that's what I will not be speaking today, right? So I will not be talking about secret things inside the database like data redaction, FGA that's related with the virtual private database, database vault, data encryption, key vault, uh, external data. I will, I will not be talking about nothing of this, okay? Today, what I will be talking about is detecting an undergoing attack in your database. So we are gonna detect a rootkit inside our database, maybe because uh, uh, some hacker deployed this or some former employee put this behind before leaving the company, right? So before we go, we go inside that team, uh, let me do a very quick retrospective from the last two years, right? So those are the total CV, uh, database related CVs on the last five, six years, okay? So we see that in 2014, we had 43 CVs and CVs is common vulnerability exposure are usually uh, some uh, vulnerability that is raised for that application and then Oracle correct that CVs in the, for, the, for the application layers that Oracle, for Oracle products, right? So here I only grouped the database related CVs. And, we, and if we note in this graph, we see that the numbers were decreasing, but in 2018 uh, to 2019, this number increased again. And here in 2020, uh, until April this year, so until the second quarter, CPU cycle, we already have 20 CVs fits and then probably we will end this year uh, with a number around 30, right? Like 2016. So we see that this number is going up again. And uh, just to give, just to explain about those CVs, if we get like the latest one, that was the April, 2020, we see that for each CV, uh, there is a, a, a score, right? So what is this score? This score is, is given based on all the other columns and mainly on those three columns here, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, right? So the confidentiality column tells that if someone explore this CV and basically to explore this CV, all the guy needed is a great session uh, inside the database. So once it, get, it connects, it can break the confidentiality. And confidentiality basically means that it will be able to do a select any table. Okay, it will be able to read all the table. Integrity means that it will be also 
uh, it will also be able to change the table, so break the integrity of your database. So uh, this, uh, this translator to user grants would mean it will be able to scale to insert any table, update any table, or delete any table privilege, just with a trade session, right? And availability means it's going to be able to put your database offline or break your system, putting it down and, and bringing some availability to it, right? So we see by this CV that with just a great session privilege, you can do all of this, exploring this failure, right? And this also affects all the supported versions that exist, right? We don't see 20C here. I'm not sure if it affects the 20C, but anyway, uh, this was an April 2020, basically mean now supported versions were affected, right? And sometimes I, I, I sound like a broken record because I keep saying, apply the latest patch that Oracle provides as soon as it gets released. And why? Basically because when a patch is released, the first thing the, the, the record community does is reverse engineering this patch. So they get the patch code do a reverse engineering in the patch code, and then they compare the correct, patch, the correct binary version with the uncorrected one. And then they see exactly what was corrected. And now they know how to explore it because they know what was the failure, and then they create exploits uh, based on this failure, right? So as soon as Oracle releases a patch, it's also releasing what was the failure uh, in the background, right? Because people do this to, to discover and to realize what the failure was. Also, the exploit prices go down in the, in the deep web and they are very easy to find. Let me change here my cursor to pointer. Okay. So here is an example. This is a CV that was corrected on July, if I'm not wrong, July last year, uh, CPU cycle, okay? So this, is, this CV was scored 9.4. So this is a very high score. And the price that it had by that time, by the time that the correction was given by Oracle was from 25K to 100K dollars to buy a CV, this uh, exploit on the deep web. But if you noted here before Oracle correct th that CV, this was much expensive, right? Much more expensive. It was a, above 100K to buy an exploit. This is a, a lot of money, right? But for companies that maybe are doing some, uh, they, are, are, they maybe they, they want to attack their competitors, this is not so much money if you can put your competitor down, right? So this is a, the reason that, that the reason the exploit price goes down is a reason that uh, leads you to apply the patch as soon as it gets released as well, right? So uh, the title of my session was detecting those malicious changes, right, in the Oracle databases. So what are those malicious changes? Basically, things that affects those three columns that we saw in the CV, right? So things that will break your confidentiality, your availability, or the integrity of your system, okay? And who may create those malicious changes and place them inside your Oracle database? Most of the time are hackers who somehow break your firewall, uh, your firewall peri per perimeter and go inside your company and, and then go inside your database somehow and put those malicious changes there or can also be former employees, right? So people, many people before leaving the company, if they are malicious intent intended, they can put a hood kit so they keep a back door open to go back one day if they want, right? So you heard a, a lot about, uh, you heard me saying a lot about HootKit. So I will explain what HootKit is in, in the soap of uh, malware, uh, malware words, right? So HootKits are basically a kit to become Hood, right? So it's a piece of malicious code. So it's a malware, okay? And usually, this will allow this will, will allow uh, privileged access where normally a user is not allowed to have, right? So, if you deploy a hook kit in an OS, that means that without being being connected as hood, you can 
trigger this hoot kit and then this will bring you a hoot console, okay? And if we do the same uh, analogy to database, for our, for our Oracle database, this would give you a sys privilege on the database, okay? And another, uh, another thing that a hootkit, hootkit does is being well hidden in your system, okay? A hootkit doesn't want to be uh, discovered, so it's usually inserted in a very, very hidden place in the system. So this is an example from Alexander Kornbrust uh, from his hootkit 2.0 uh, session that was uh, like uh, many, many, many years ago, I think more than 10 years ago. Uh, of a hootkit infecting the hoot command in OS. So as you can see here, uh, a system that doesn't have the hoot command infected, when you type who, you can see the hacker uh, account connected. However, when you place a hootkit in the hoot command here, it's, it's, it's uh, hiding the hacker account from the OS. So the sysadmin, when he connects on these systems, in, in the system and maybe type who, it won't see that there is a hacker connected there, right? So a hootkit maybe in this example is affecting just the hoot command to see who is connected on your system. But maybe it can be also uh, exploiting the top command. So you won't see a hacker processing, uh, maybe mining your, your do some mining and using uh, all your CPU because the top process will be also hacked, right? Or maybe also uh, other other processes like PS or maybe even LS do not show some folder inside the system, okay? So there, there is this statement that I like a lot and it says that if a code can be stored, a hootkit can be deployed, right? So any piece of uh, anything that can hold a code can also hold a hootkit. And this statement was created by me. Actually, it's just a joke. What I mean here is you need to, you, you need to take care of anything that can hold codes, right? And Oracle databases uh, is not immune to that because in Oracle database, you can have, uh, you have many ways of restoring codes. Like you can have Bucico, you can have Java source, uh, you can have even C code there. And if I'm not wrong now, you can also have JavaScript, right? So you can have hootkits inside Oracle database as you can have all those type of uh, programming languages, right? So this is, uh, an, uh, this is uh, just showing the analogous idea of a hootkit infecting your op operating system and your database. So if it's infecting your OS, maybe trying to hide the OS users like infecting the password file, right? In the database, it will hide the database users, maybe infecting the DBA users or CDB users, right? If it's trying to hide a lot of the users, as we saw uh, with the who command, in the database, it would infect like the V$ session. So it won't show you the sessions that exist, the true sessions that exist in your database. So hiding jobs, maybe uh, infecting cron tab in the database would uh, affect the database schedule, right? And so forth for files, for processes, and other kind of other types of objects that you have in the database. So one thing that I use to protect myself against a hacker is I try to think like them, right? So the first thing when people ask me, hey, Rodrigo, can you please check if this system is exposed, right? So the first thing I do is I try to think how could I destroy that system if I wanted, right? So I start trying to break the system in all the holes that I can think about. And then I start creating the, the walls to protect the system as a whole, right? So I don't want to, to keep any, any, any breach opened in that system, but I, what I, my strategy is to think like a hacker. And that's my, my advice if you want to protect your system as well. You need to think how to destroy it to protect it, okay? So now we are gonna start uh, some examples uh, of attack vectors that can uh, infect our databases and how we can protect against them, okay? So uh, again, here, uh, what I will show you, uh, we are gonna temper dictionary objects. So don't try it at home, right? Uh, I will not go in details how you get 
to SysDBA to deploy that rootkits. Uh, I will show you how they work, but not how you, uh, you escalate to SysDBA. Maybe this can be implemented by a former employee that was SysDBA on, on, uh, in the past, okay. So let's start with hiding database, hiding database users. Okay, so here we have a very important database view, DBA users, right? And here we have the predicates of DBA users. So here we see a lot of uh, uh, conditions, joining, joining tables that will give the output of DBA users. But what a few people note here is that this statement here that now I put in, in red, I've inserted it. And mainly, uh, basically what it means translating to a better word is, it means that I don't want to show you the user whose ID is 122. But the reason I put this that way is because usually you tend to think that this was inserted uh, out of the box by Oracle, because this is a complex way of writing the same thing, okay? If I put like that, it would be so obvious to you. And here we will see an example of a database infected with this kind of rootkit, okay? So let me press play here. Where is the play button? Let me change the pointer back to arrow. Yeah, now I can see it. Okay, so here I'm just showing you that I mean connected to a 18.7 uh, database, okay? And then I connect a SysDBA and I show you that I have two PDBs. And I try to connect with a username C hash hash high and you can see that I, 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 I were able to connect, I was able to connect. But then if I query user table for that user, Let's see what we get. We see we don't have a user named the C hash hash high in these DBA users, neither in CDB users, right? So I was able to connect with a user that doesn't exist on the views. However, if I query the user dollar table, then I can see that user there, right? So this is a, a, a a pretty simple example just show you that DBA users and CDB users was infected not to show that user in, in your database, right? Okay, let me show you another example now of another, another way of deploying a rootkit inside the database. So then another thing a hacker can do is modifying uh, some internal packages and the important internal packages to deploy a rootkit there. So how he would do that? First of all, Oracle deploys some out of the box code in our database, but unwrapping them is pretty easy, right? If you type unwrap on Google, you will see some sites that you just put your PLSQL rapid code there and it will bring you back it in a rapid way. So what a hacker can do is he can unwrap the internal sys code, uh, then with the unwrapped code, he can inject some root ketones inside and then wrap it again and, and in, inject this, this infected code inside your database. So you won't know that this code was infected. So let's see, and of course, after the attacker do those steps, he will clean his traces, right? Remember that uh, inside the, the mind of the attacker, he will never leave a trace behind. So he will probably update the last DDL time of OB, OBJ dollar uh, uh, table. He will also clean the audits. So you don't you don't note that you don't note that this package was altered. Okay. So let's see an example with DBMS output here. Imagine if he changes the put line procedure, and DBMS output put line is a very very common. Uh, used procedure that basically will print in the in the screen what you want right so he can he can uh, in fact this procedure here inside this package to when you type a, a given string he, this this procedure will trigger a user creation and will give DBA to this user okay so we are going to see an example of this thing happening so here again I connect 
with this user C hash hash RJ, and we see that th this user does, uh, doesn't exist, okay? Now I will connect with a hidden only user, and I will show that this user has no privileges at all. So no tab privs, no whole privs. The only sys privs is create session. And then uh, I will start printing something on the screen. So the first thing I print is good morning, and it shows good morning, right? Then I print, my name is Rodrigo. And you see in this screen, my name is Rodrigo, pretty obvious, right? But now what happens if I print, sh, keep it secret? When I print, when I ask put line to print, sh, keep it secret, it triggered a user creation in the background. And now if I try to connect with that user, I can. So now I triggered a database, a DBA user creation, just giving a very specific sentence to dbms output dot put line. So this is a very, very simple example of a hood kit that infected the dbms output, okay. So what, uh, what type, what, what, what would be the target objects for this kind of hood kits? Mainly objects that are owned by sys and that is executed with the privileges of the owner. So would execute with the privileges of sys. So the create user and the grant DBA uh, execute immediate commands wouldn't fail, right? And also uh, objects that has execute uh, privilege to public. So we have a pretty extensive list of objects that could be target of this kind of rootkit. And in, in this example, I use a DBMS output. But maybe the attacker could also use DBMS random, right? So maybe if you, if you specify a very specific seed to DBMS random package, this will trigger the, the, the user creation and grant DBA to some user, right? So, okay, we sh I showed you two ways of, uh, of infecting the database with hood kits, but the target of this session is not showing you how to, to infect it, but how to detect it, right? So how do we detect those hood kits in our databases? So uh, using Shetson, right? So what you need to do is you need to, to get the Shetson. Uh, so Shetson is simply a signature, a unique ID, actually not unity, but a, a very hand, random and irreversible, irreversible a code that will be created from a large code, right? So you create a checksum from all your, your database objects that can handle code, right? So those would be views, procedure, packages, triggers, functions, and so forth, right? And then you would periodically check those hashes for changes. So if your database, if the code, the, the checksum of your code changes, that means that this code was infected or maybe altered by some PSU or bundle patch, I don't know. But that means that the, that code was changing, right? So that's a, 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 a example of how you would create uh, a checksum for the DBMS output package from sys. So here, what I'm doing is I simply looping over all the lines of DBMS output and then I'm, I'm putting all those lines together in this C log variable here. And then I'm creating the hash for this code. And then this is the hash here, okay? And what I will do is I would periodically ch check this object to see if this uh, hash here is changing for, for, for any reason, okay? However, we need to be, uh, we need to be uh, we to have some attention because a rootkit is so smart that it will also try to uh, avoid you from detecting him. Do you remember that I said that one of the things that a rootkit does is being very well hidden? So maybe the rootkit will also infect your DBA source not to show you the correct lines, but the wrong lines. So you won't note that the code was changed. Or maybe it would also uh, infect the DBMS crypto. So when you when uh, one hash should be returned, it would return another hash. So you also don't uh, note that this uh, this package or procedure or code was changed. Or maybe even the DBMS output put line procedure, as I just showed you showed you here, uh, that we can use it to trigger a user creation 
this could also be used maybe to change uh, a return value, uh, a return string value when you, you ask for someone, okay? Uh, so what I usually do uh, to avoid those masking techniques from, of the rootkit is I don't use DBMS, D, sorry, DBA source uh, to get the code. I go directly to the tables, to the underlying tables, right? And also I don't use DBMS crypto to create the hashes. I use some third party tool, and there is a very famous one, this one in the GitHub. You can simply create it uh, on your schema and use it to create the hashes of the codes, right? Or another way uh, to create a hash of uh, your database internal codes without even going, uh, using the, the database in Gini to retrieve the code is going directly to the data files, right? So a way you can get uh, the code from the data files is using strings. So in this example here, I'm going to the system database file and getting uh, the package body of DBMS crypto, right? And then uh, piping this to Shawansun. So I'm creating a, a Shawansun for, for that, right? So I'm not using database again for that. And if this uh, this uh, database file, the system database file is inside this ASM, then you will need to copy this to outside the ASM before running this, right? But remember, if you have TDE in your system, uh, then uh, this won't be possible, okay? So this is one way of checking uh, your database for tempered objects, but there is another way, and the other way is aura checksum. So what is Aura Shetson? Aura Shetson is a tool, is a signature checker for Oracle core objects, right? So what Aura Shetson does, uh, it's gonna compare your database with a brand new uh, out of the box database deployed by Oracle, like a, a clean one, a, a just installed database. And then it's gonna compare uh, the, the, the code of this brand new database with the code you have in your database to check if anything was changed. And Aura uh works with all the releases from 11.2 onwards, right? Uh, 20C is not yet implemented, but will be implemented soon. And it's also compatible with any PSU or bundle patch or OJVM applied. So that means that if you applied uh, the April 2020 bundle patch in your database, uh, the Aura Chat Sun has also this, the, the signatures for the objects that were changed by this bundle patch and will not give you false positives, okay? And the, the tool will report either match, no match, or not found, okay? Meaning that your, the signature is okay, the hash of your objects is matching what, with what Oracle provides in, in an out-of-the-box installation. No match if something is different or not found if that object that exists in our database uh, is, uh, is not deployed by default by Oracle, maybe because you create something on the CZ schema, right? And this tool uh, is being quarterly uh, updated to, to get the latest PSU and bundle patches and RU, RURs uh, that are deployed by Oracle, right? So this tool is, is available in the GitHub. It's, uh, as I said, is, is open source and you don't need to install anything on it, right? Uh, it uses underlying OS tools to compare and to create the hashes. So it only works on Linux or Solaris. It doesn't work on Windows yet, but if you have Sidwin installed on Windows, uh, it has a chance to work. I never tested it. Uh, it can be executed remotely, so if you have a database running in Windows, what you can do is you can run this tool from a Linux client, right? Connecting using TNS and can be executed by any user that has a read-only privilege on your database dictionary because the tool will simply get your database internal code and compare with the ones that are provided by Oracle in a clean installation, okay? So how to use this tool is you can simply clone it then you go inside the tool folder, and then you call this orochatson.sql, simply like that. And when it runs, it will give you an HTML output that I will show you uh, in a few minutes. Uh, and then you can uh, open this HTML output to see what, what are, the, what are the, the findings of the tool, okay?
The second method you have to run this tool if you don't like Git is just using wget to get uh, the, the, from the master trail of GitHub uh, the zip there, and then you rename it, and then you open the folder, and then you just run the tool in the same way. You just call this orashetson.sql file. Okay. If you have multiple databases in the same system, you can also run this orashetson sh, and it will simply loop over your Aura tab and call the orashetson.sql uh, for all the databases you have in the system. Okay. And when the tool is running, you will, you will see some verbal output, uh, show you the matches and no matches and not founds, but uh, just uh, you to see that the tool is running, right? Because what you're gonna see as the result is the HTML file that I will show you in a few seconds, okay? So then when you open the HTML output, that's the look and feel of the tool. Okay, it's very, it's very similar to EDB360 and SQL D360 from, from Carlos Sierra and Mauro Pagano, because basically it uses the same API to create the HTML output. Okay. So let's stop, stop uh, talking and see the demo. Okay. So when you run the tool, uh, you will get a zip file as the output. Okay, just like that. And if you unzip this zip file, you will get uh, a folder full of files inside. And once you have you open this 01index.html file, you will get this uh, this vision here. Okay. So uh, going to the I, I run this tool. I've I've run this tool for the database that I just showed you where I have infected the DBA users and DBMS output. So let's see what would be the, the two result for that. If I check here the pie, the pie graph, the pie chart, I see that for this database, I, uh, I have about seven, uh, 7,600 objects and two only I had a not found and one no match for CDB source, right? And if I go here to the HTML output to see what was the no match, you see it's the DBMS output, the one that I infected with, uh, I infected putting uh, the code that would trigger a user creation when uh, I gave that sentence stupid secret, right? And I have two not found here because the tool simply doesn't know what is the hash that is expected for those objects, right? So it just gives you a, give you a not found answer. And if I check for views and I go here in the pie, uh, I see that for views, uh, almost everything was a match, right? But only one had a no match. And if I go here in the HTML of this finding, I see that the, uh, the no match was the DB users that I put that extra predicate that would, was hiding the C hash hash RJ user from the database, okay? And here we can even see the objects that had difference. So objects with difference, if I click here uh, and I click DBA users, I, I have the code here, but it's not showing what line is different, but I know that the different line that isn't expected is this one here, right? That line here. And the reason uh, it doesn't show you exactly what line is different is because uh, the tool doesn't have the code, the, the expected code. The tool has only the expected hash. So it can tell you uh, exactly what is the difference, right? It just tell you that the hash have a no match. If I put in the tool all the code, this tool would uh, would have like more than one gigabyte of size, right? It would be it would be itself a database, right? So it only has hashes. And here, if I get the DBMS output code, I see that I have this hash here, uh, this this wrapped object here. But if I copy this and paste to the to an online unwrapper and ask this to be unwrapped. Here in the DBMS output both line procedure, I see exactly the part of the code that had the hotkit inserted, right? So 
when I, I asked put line to, 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 to print, she keep it secret, that's when the create user, uh, the create, create user statement was processed and was triggered, right? Okay. And here, as you can see, the tool has many other sections that I will talk about in a few minutes. Let me go back to the, to the presentation here. Okay, so how is the tool? The tool, when you when you clone it from the GitHub repo, you will see that it has a CSV folder. And inside this CSV folder, you have many files, many zipped files. And let me just uh, unzip one of them for you as an example. And here, if I unzip this db.csv.zip, uh, I see one file for each database version, right? So let's say let's get this 18, uh, 18c dot csv file as an example. And if I open it, and here I'm just showing you for the DBMS, DBMS stats. This is the CSV file format. So here we what I have in the first column is the owner name type type and container of the object that I'm analyzing and the expected checksum for this object. However, as uh, the checksum can change uh, when you apply a RU or a RUR. Here in the last columns, I have uh, for what range of RU is this checksum valid, right? So we see that DBMS stats, uh, the package body of DBMS stats keeps changing over RU. So from, from the base release until RU2 of the 18C, uh, that was that expected checksum for the RU, RU3 that was expected and so forth. So the tool, when it run against your database, it will see the RU that you're placed and get the correct line from this file to analyze if it has a match or no match. And we can see as well here in this, in this sample that the package of the DBMS stats, now I'm not talking about the package body, but the package never changed, right? So the stats was always the same. Okay, so uh, let me show you some other uh, examples of ways that hackers can use to attack the database, okay? So hiding some permissions. So uh, basically, when you want to check for a user permission, almost everybody go to those three views, right? DBA tab proofs, DBA whole proofs, and DBA sys proofs. They don't go to the underlying table. So this is already something dangerous because those views can be tempered. Just like a tempered DBA users, those views can also be tempered to hide some uh, important privilege like the DBA privilege, right? So here uh, is uh, the, the second game of today. What I have is I'm creating a user that I, I named this user as read the only one, okay? And I only, give for this user the create session and I give select on sys user dollar table, okay? And I also do something here that I'm not showing you and that's what I want you to guess what I did, okay? So if I check for the privileges of this user, the tab privs, I see that it only has select on user dollar, also no whole privs and sys privs only create session, okay? However, once I connect with this user, I'm able to update a very important column of user dollar table. That's the column that hold, basically they hold the user password. So doing that, uh, what I'm doing is basically changing this sys password through updating the user dollar table. But note, again, I, I, I didn't give uh, update uh, for this user in this table. And if I query CDB tab privs checking for any access in user dollar different from select, I don't have anything. So now is my question. What I did here that made it possible for that user to update the spare for column uh, on user dollar table. And now I will trigger the timer, and if anyone has a guess, please put in the chat window. And timer is on again. 
This one is only 15 seconds. Okay, time is running out. Anyone? Simon, do we have any answer in the chat? Okay, I think that's a no, right? Because I can't hear you. <laughs> Uh, sorry, okay. uh, no, no answers. Uh, I was muted in here. No, no answers. Okay, okay, thank you. So basically, what I did here is I grant update in only one column of this table to that user. And nobody checks the DBA call privilege for user privilege. And this is a very, very important uh, privilege, uh, privilege dictionary table because if you give permission to your user in every column of a table, it won't show in DBA tab privs, but it will have full privilege on that table, right? So don't forget to also check DBA call privs for user privilege. Nobody does that, but now start doing that, please. Okay. Uh, so another way of hiding permissions is uh, if we check the default privilege that we have in a database, we can see that there are so, so many, right? If we query DBA tab privs, we have more than 52K privilege. If we query DBA whole privs, uh, more than 100. And DBA sys privs, about 1,000. And the, the, all of those are out of the box privilege. It's not privilege that we give to our users, right? So imagine if a, a, an attacker simply, let's get the select, select catalog hole as an, uh, as an example. Imagine if a attacker insect, uh, inject in this world of more than 4.5K privileges that this hole has, just one extra privilege, right? How is the DBA that uh, take care of this database gonna know that among this 4.5K privilege that we have in this database, there, there is an extra one that is not expected to be there. And basically this one is very powerful because I'm giving any user now that has select catalog privilege, uh, the permission to control the virtual private database, right? So this DBMS or less int from internal is used by a virtual private database to control a lot of things, right? So now if I create a user and I just give create session select catalog hold to this user, this user becomes very powerful because someone inserted one privilege in the soap of 4.5K privileges, right? So how do we also detect that? And now let's go back to our tool. So Orashat Sum has also uh, those other sections where, where instead of comparing chat it compares it compares rows of your database with what Oracle provides in an out of the box installation. So here, for instance, it's comparing table privs what you have more than what Oracle deploys. If I go here to the pie chart, I see that it had a match of 104 K, right? A lot of privilege. And only 14 privilege is something that you really inserted in this database that doesn't came uh, uh, with the database itself, right? So if we check for those specific lines, we see here uh, some uh, lines that are created by uh, database vote. And those ones are created by every time you create a new user, this line gets inserted, right? And here uh, we see the line that was that I inserted in this in the in the middle of that 104k privilege, right? So it would be good to have a column in that in that table named maybe uh, uh, I don't know uh, uh, as Oracle has for DBA users, right? Like internal user or out of the box user would be have would, would be good to have like a internal or out of the box privilege column here, right? But anyway, a hacker could just update that column value. So that's why it's important also to use this tool to really compare what is expected to have, right? And here, uh, if we go to the privs, column privs, we see that uh, it only has nine 
uh, out of the box. And one difference here, and if we check the difference, uh, we see that uh, update on, on, on spare four column of user dollar here, okay? And it's also done by many other type of objects like uh, audit, uh, audit options or scheduler options or database vote things, right? So it does, it does this kind of analysis for many types of objects. And you always expect to see a zero here. Of course, when you don't have a zero can, can mean that are things that you created but are not off, out of the box, okay? Let's go back to our session. Okay, let me talk about phishing attacks. That's another thing that hackers can do, right? So every time you use an internal package, internal Oracle package like DBMS stats, right? You use the public synonym, right? You don't call sys.dbms stats. Well, there are people that use it, but most of the people just go to the public synonym and the public synonym will Will, will, will redirect you to the original uh, package owned by sys. But what if an attacker do a sort of the man in the middle attack here, he directing the DBMS stats call to his package, and then his package will finally call the final package, right? This is very easy to be accomplished if you give create or drop, or, or drop uh, pu public synonyms privilege to any account because the, you, the create public uh, synonym privilege, uh, it also has the replace public synonym privilege uh, attached, right? You don't, you can't just grant the replace. You, you either grant create, uh, create or replace or you don't grant anything, right? So how can this can be accomplished? Maybe the hacker that has like create procedure and uh, create public synonym privilege, he will create, uh, a package in his schema that has basically the same structure of the package that he's trying to attack or to do the mid, man in the middle uh, attack. And what he's gonna do is he will create the same structure but he will change the code. And the code will do what he wants and then we'll call the final package, right? And then he is doing an alpha ID current user because this is gonna be executed by who is calling this package. So. Once a DBA calls DBMS stats, then the DBA will be running this command here, right? And then we'll call the final package. So he won't note that something happened here in the background, right? And of course, he will also put like a, a exception block here in case this failures, so it doesn't pop up in the screen, right? Then after the hacker account does this kind of, uh, of uh, man in the middle, he will simply grant his package to public, and then, as I said, he will do the replace per synonym action, and just wait for some DBA to try to maybe to try to get stats for a table, right? Don't uh, don't going straight to the to the to the sys dot dbms stats, but rather using the public synonym, so it's gonna trigger the 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 grand DBA action that we saw here, right? Well, uh, on 12C onwards, this is harder to, to, to exploit because now Oracle inserted this inherit privilege, but by default, every user that you create uh, grants uh, inherit privilege to public by default, right? And then one device that I do is every time you create a new user in your database, evoke this privilege, this inherit privilege privilege, right? From the, the user to public because this will make it harder for people to exploit this kind of failure, okay? Not failure, this kind of, uh, I would say, exploit. Okay, so here we are going to the end of our session. Basically, again, uh, Orochet Sun will scan for changes in views, in pill SQL, in also in jobs, because jobs can hold code, right? So we also scan for uh, for changes in those kind of objects. Also in logon triggers, maybe a attacker could, could modify uh, out of the box logon trigger to do what he wants, right? So Oracle Sun is also scanning for that. And Oracle Chat Sun also scans for some binaries and libraries and SQL files if you run this inside the database server. So it will check for RDBMS 
SQL folder for any change. Because maybe imagine if the attacker changes the cat proc or catalog.sql file, right? So every time you create a new database, they would put a malware inside your database uh, without your concern, right? So our chat sun also chats for that. But here I don't put a green V because you have a lot of false positives and also it's not totally implemented. Okay. So final remarks now. Well, uh, security is like a hide and seek game, right? So people first build the virus and then the antivirus companies go after them, right? So it, it's much easier for you to hide something than to find. Because when an attacker, uh, when an attacker puts some malicious code in your system, he can put it in a thousand different places. And you as a secure guy, you need to go in those thousand places to be sure that nothing is left behind. Because if you forget a single place and that single place is, a, is infected, your security is totally compromised, right? So one of the advice that I do is if you suspect that something very weird happened to your system, format it, right? So move your database to another system. Maybe if it's an Oracle database, do a transportable table space so you have a brand new dictionary, right? As we saw here, uh, things can infect database dictionary. So go to a very new database dictionary or even OS, right? Move to another OS. And security is only as good as your weakest link. So imagine what, what I mean with that, uh, with that uh, quote here, with that sentence that imagine you have a, a lot of uh, links and those links represent security layers around your data center, around your company, right? So you need to think in every, every link. You need to think about your OS user privilege in your database privilege, your network firewall. Usually companies only care about network firewall, but the web logic security is also as important, especially when you have like this web logic uh, with public access, right? So imagine you forget a simple, a simple, a simple link here, like file access control, and somebody in your company just give a CH mod seven seven seven. This is very common, unfortunately to a very important uh, folder in your system. Maybe that's holding your database files, right? So now you just replace this link for a very weak, weak thing here, right? And that's probably the way an attacker will try to get inside your company. Maybe stealing your database files and then trying to run some, uh, some tool to read the information from those database files, right? Okay, guys, we, we, now it's the end. Again, this is my Twitter and LinkedIn. If you want to add me, my website, I usually post uh, many, many things related to security and cloud and well, anything that is also related to Oracle database, you can go to my website and that's it. Do we have any questions? I hope I didn't scare anyone. Uh... Yes, now the questions are open. So if someone has something, uh, please share. But first, thank you, Rodrigo. Uh, now I'm thinking to run my database is in the media only, just, and I never test it myself too. So all the users have select and just that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, I have one question that is for me, is uh, something that I remember watching the session. Uh, what do you think about the golden images or golden Oracle homes or something like that, that the Oracle home now for 19C, I think is just now can be used as read only or something like that. Yeah, they are, they are very important, right? There is a full section of this session that I talk about that, but I had to remove it because as you saw, we only have two minutes left, but uh, there is some a part here that I talk about this, right? Um, basically, uh, it's very important to keep your database read-only and with uh, not only read-only, but in a way that even Oracle user can't touch it. And I will tell you why, because the first thing a hacker will do 
if he is he, he gets inside your database. He's trying to escape from your database to your OS, right? So he's going to go to the OS as Oracle user using some Java way or maybe exploiting a, a, a UTL file or replacing the SSH authorized, authorized, uh, authorized keys with UTL file. And there are some other ways. And then he will try to exploit the database files. Too. So that's why it's very important to keep your database ready only. And if you use go the images, use the use the go the images that are provided by Oracle. If you create a go the image, just be sure that your database is not uh, infected because if it's infected, you're going to replicate this infection everywhere, right? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I have uh, uh, another one that is. Uh, what do you think about uh, use, uh, how can I say that, uh, Kubernetes and something like that to try to be more uh, secure, but I think that's the same that you talk it. And uh, another one is a part of the client information, but since you are related with security for Oracle, it's common to see or to 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 be info to to see uh, Oracle database that was exploited. The numbers do you have some kind of numbers or you got some examples of that or is difficult to see this? Yeah, usually. Uh usually companies don't publish this, right? They don't publish, wow, I found three databases that were uh, exploited and infected, right? Uh, so th those numbers are not easy to find. Uh, I've done already this security job in many companies, but mainly protecting and trying to find something. So I create the protections. Uh, and while you create protections, I, I've never faced a scenario where I, I saw a uh, attack happening right so I, I but i saw a lot a lot of exposures and then i created those breaches but never saw attack happening uh, on the fly while i was connected okay uh yes uh, so i think that we have no more question first i want to thank uh sabine to creating this image so this will help a lot uh but uh i want to like to thank you and yeah, thank, thank you all this Thank you all the speakers for today to sharing the time with us and knowledge. And for tomorrow, we have uh, Sadesh, we have uh, Robert, we have Alexa Bala, and we have Mariani talking about uh, data science for an autonomous database. Uh, we have Oracle Cloud infrastructure, uh, how to move to Oracle Cloud, and some concepts about memory structure or logical structure and is that I think that uh, was amazing, your session, the other sessions. Uh, so thank you so much to be with us. And uh, tomorrow, we'll see you. See you tomorrow, uh, as I can, I can.